see my presentation now? Yes. Okay, great. So uh, the topic of my speech is um, Ornstein on the back then group in the space of measures. Um, I will start uh, with recalling of the definition of uh, Bernoulli noise. Um, just a second. Uh, so let epsilon n be a sequence of independent random variables with Bernoulli distribution. Uh, so it equal to plus one and minus one with the same probabilities, one divided by two. And define uh, the random variables phi from f uh, for any continuous function f uh, as the following uh, sum. Uh, we will call a set of such uh, random variables phi from f uh, by the Bernoulli noise in space of continuous function. Uh, the following theorem states that uh, elements of Bernoulli noise weakly converge to elements of Gaussian white noise. So we built, uh, let's say, an approximation of Gaussian white noise. Um, and now we want to uh, chaotic representation for any square integrable functional uh, measurable with respect to the sequence of Bernoulli random variable. Uh, it can be represented as a following sum of orthogonal polynomials. Uh, the indices here are not equal because uh, of the construction of this, um, because uh, the uh, Bernoulli random variable to the, uh, let's say, square is just one, and uh, to the degree three, it's uh, just, again, uh, this epsilon. So uh, the indices here are not equal. And one can note that if we uh, rearrange uh, the indices in this coefficient, it won't change anything. So we've got the following equality for uh, this coefficients A. Uh, as an example, let's consider um, the following functional. Um, it's a minimum uh, of such number n that epsilon n equal to plus one. So it's the first time where in our sequence we see plus one. We will uh, now assume that uh, the indices are arranged and uh, i1 is less or equal than i2 and so on. And one can find the coefficients a uh, using the following equality. So if we assume that um, uh, alpha has the following representation, we uh, multiply by uh, this uh, polynomial epsilon i1, epsilon ik, uh, and uh, calculate the expectation to find this coefficient. Multiplier one or two k factorial appears because we arranged the indices, so we've got k factorial uh, same um, semantics here. Um, we can calculate the following probabilities. Uh, um, if m is less than uh, the greatest index, index uh, ik, uh, then the probability that um, our functional multiplied by this polynomial equal to plus m, actually equal to the probability that this expression equal to minus m. And um, what does it mean? It means that uh, epsilon 1 and so on, epsilon m minus 1 must be equal to minus 1. Epsilon uh, m equal to plus 1. And the sign here is defined by the sign of this uh, polynomial. So it must be that uh, this product equal to plus one for the first probability and minus one for the next probability. Because of the independency of um, Bernoulli random variable and because of symmetry, we've got that such probabilities equal to uh, one over two to the power m plus one. Um, the probability that uh, this expression equal to plus ik uh, equal to, so we need that uh, epsilon i1, epsilon 1 to epsilon uh, ik minus 1 uh, must be equal to minus 1, and this last epsilon here equal to plus 1. And again, uh, for this, uh, because of this sign here, plus, uh, we multiply by the following um, indicator. And such for the uh, the same thing is 
for uh, the second probability. And here, uh, the last probability that the absolute value of um, such expression greater than IK, uh, it means that um, any epsilon um, where in this, um, whose index less or equal than IK uh, equal to minus one. And this happens with probability one over two to the power IK. Um, now, uh, we can rewrite this expression as the following sum. So we basically split it by um, uh, in sum uh, by uh, the values it can have. Uh, and here, uh, this function is the minimum, but n is greater than ik, that epsilon n equal to plus one. Uh, if we calculate the expectation of uh, this whole expression using the probabilities that we described before, uh, we've got uh, the following coefficients ik and uh, a0, which is equal just to an expectation of alpha epsilon equal to 2. And we've got uh, such an expression for a minimum uh, for the first uh, time uh, when we see uh, plus 1 in our sequence of independent identical distributed random variables. Um, now I want to move on to operators of second quantization. Uh, in Gaussian case, um, they appear in problems of quantum mechanics uh, when we're dealing with uh, variable number of particles. And uh, the methods of second quantization um, is described in works of Bedesian or Simon. Uh, and now I want to give the definition properties of operators of second quantization in Gaussian case, which is more uh, known. And uh, now, uh, and then uh, move to the Bernoulli case. So let H be a separable Hilbert space with the um, following norm and inner product. And Xi is a generalized Gaussian random element in H. Uh, or um, Gaussian white noise. If random variable alpha is measurable with respect to the xi and has finite second form, then alpha has an intervening expansion of the following form, uh, where uh, this product here with stars can be obtained from an usual product uh, by substituting uh, the powers with uh, Hermite polynomials of the corresponding degree. Uh, you can read more about it in book of Dorgovce. Uh, now let C be a continuous linear operator in our Hilbert space H with norm less or equal than one. Uh, then the operator of second quantization corresponding to C can be defined by this formula. Um, now consider a new generalized Gaussian random element eta of the following form, where xi uh, prime has the same distribution as, uh, uh, as xi, but uh, independent from it. Then for any random variable alpha with an iter of inner expansion we defined before, uh, we define new random variable alpha from eta, uh, where we just substitute uh, xi with eta uh, in our iter inner expansion. Uh, the following lemma proved by Dragovtsev uh, give us the representation of an action of operator second quantization as a conditional expectation of this alpha eta with respect to xi. And I want to use the same approach to construct an operator of second quantization for Bernoulli case. Uh, so let's define a new sequence of independent random variables with the following distribution. So the pair epsilon n, epsilon n prime uh, distributed just like that, uh, where Pn uh, is from interval from minus one to one. Uh, the following lemma help us to calculate the conditional expectation of products of uh, this new epsilon primes with respect to our old sequence epsilon, and it's equal just to product of epsilons uh, multiplied by the corresponding uh, elements of sequence of the coefficients p. Uh, then. Uh, by analogy with the Gaussian um, case uh, for square for a square integrable functional from epsilon, which has the following chaotic representation, we will describe we will define a new random variable alpha from epsilon prime, uh, where we just substitute epsilon with epsilon prime. 
Uh, then if we calculate the conditional expectation of alpha epsilon prime with respect to epsilon, we've got the following expression. And it already has some good properties. For example, um, since it's conditional expectation, um, for non-negative alpha, uh, this expression again is non-negative. Uh, and we will define the operator of second quantization corresponding to sequence Pn uh, using this uh, expression. It's not, um, uh, it's not the most general definition because uh, if we um, look at the limit behavior, we only can get uh, the operator of second quantization corresponding to operator of multiplication uh, in Gaussian case. But uh, this is a partial case, and it's enough to define the operator of Ornstein on Bexham group. Uh, the Ornstein on Bexham group operators are partial case of operator of second quantization, and they they are used, for example, to localize an extended stochastic integral uh, in work of Dragovtsev and Gomilko uh, to derive the logarithmic suballoy inequality and the Poincaré inequality for infinite dimensional Gaussian measures. In work of Bogachev, uh, in the work of Popkov and Lito, uh, modified sobel inequality was obtained for Bernoulli noise. And uh, maybe it's possible that the Ornstein Bexham group uh, that I want to build uh, can be used to prove this inequality similarly to the Gaussian case. So now let's consider the analog operator of Ornstein Bexham group and investigate the properties. Uh, for any n, we consider Pn equal to exponent to the power minus t uh, and define the operator t epsilon uh, with the following expression. So we just multiplied every um, polynomial of degree k in our equivalent representation by exponent to the power minus kt. Uh, some properties uh, that can be obtained just from the construction. Uh, the semigroup property, uh, T epsilon is a convection operator, and the property of strong contiguity is also holds. Um, in Gaussian case, um, there is an ornstein ollenbeck process, which is related to ornstein ollenbeck semigroup, and we can define um, the action of semigroup on some functional uh, by calculating the expectation of uh, uh, functional uh, of this process. Uh, and I want to build process with similar properties for Bernoulli case. Um, so let's consider the following space of sequences where every element can be equal to plus one or minus one with the following distance. Uh, mu infinity is a set of all product measures on K of the following form. And tau n is a sequence of independent exponentially distributed random variables with uh, parameter alpha equal to one. Then for such mu, we can define the process mu t um, in the following way. So mu n t equal to mu n, so it stays the same if tau n is greater than t and mu n t equal to the following measure, just the Bernoulli distribution if tau n is less or equal than t. Uh, then if we consider the following functional from k to r, um, and consider the integral of this functional over measure mu t, um, the element of x can be identified with uh, such a measure, then the expectation of this integral with respect to that measure equal to the following expression. And we can see that this is exactly the action of operator of second quantization, um, the operator of Ornstein on Bexin group, uh, onto the functional that has chaotic representation f. Um, now I want to investigate the limit properties of such measures mu t. Uh, and I will recall you that the Wasserstein distance for measure mu and nu in k is defined as the following infinitum over um, double integral uh, of the distance with respect to measure kappa, where kappa is such that its integral uh, where du equal to mu from v and integral over dv equal to um, mu uh, from u. Uh, in the following theorem states that in Wasserstein distance, the following uh, convergence holds uh, in probability. 
um, where this zeta is actually an infinite product of uh, Bernoulli measures. To prove that, I want to find such a distribution kappa that this integral can be uh, estimated in a good way. So um, if we um, consider such random element epsilon, it's just a sequence of independent, identically distributed uh, random variable, then it's have distribution um, zeta. Uh, we consider random element y, where yn has distribution mu n, and this whole um, sequence has distribution mu. And we built a new random element as follows. Uh, so it's yt, where y uh, nt equal to yn if tau n is greater than t, and yNT equal to epsilon n if tau n is uh, less or equal than t. Uh, then the passage in distance between these two measures uh, can be less or equal than the expectation of the uh, distance between these two uh, random elements, epsilon and yt. And this is less or equal than the following limit, and it's equal to 2 exponent minus t, and it goes to 0. And moreover, we not just prove that it converges, but we prove that it converges with um, exponentially fast. Um, moreover, uh, the following convergence also holds in Wasserstein distance for any Lipschitz continuous function. Uh, so if you take a composition with the Lipschitz function, it's also a converging probability in Wasserstein distance. Uh, it can be proved noting that f from yt has a distribution mu t uh, in composition with f, and f from epsilon has a distribution zeta in composition with f. And then the Wasserstein distance between these two measures can be estimated as an expectation of the distance between values of these functions. Uh, and because of uh, Lipschitz condition, um, uh, it's less or equal than constant multiplied by the distance between arguments. And from the previous proof, uh, this is less or equal than two, uh, this constant L, uh, exponent to the power minus t. And again, we get the convergence with exponent uh, speed. Uh, as an example, we can consider the following function. Uh, so it's just uh, its sum of element of the sequence divided by two to the power k plus one. According to the previous remark, uh, mu t with composition with such function should converge to uh, zeta in composition with such function. And if we calculate the characteristic function of this composition zeta with f, um, we've got the following expression. So because of independency, we've got the product here. This is a cosine. If we multiply and divide by uh, two sine uh, of t divided by two and plus one, we can see here the formula for sine of uh, double angle. And if we continue this procedure, uh, we've got the following expression, which converges to uh, two sine one over two uh, divided by t. And this is exactly the uh, characteristic function of uniform distribution or the interval from minus one half to plus one half. Um, if we consider a new function gn, which now depends on n also, uh, so it's just a normed sum of first n element of the sequence. Then according to central limit theorem, uh, that uh, in composition with such GN, uh, converge weakly to um, uh, standard Gaussian distribution. Uh, and since mu t converge to zeta, we can expect that mu t in composition with GN also converge to a standard Gaussian um, distribution, but uh, here n goes to infinity and t goes to infinity. So we need to know uh, how fast t and n should go to infinity. So this converges hold. And the following theorem state that if t n is such than um, n uh, exponent um, grow faster than n, then the following converges holds. Um, 
to prove that, we can uh, note that uh, the Wasserstein distance between these two measures uh, less or equal than the sum of this Wasserstein distance. And this first uh, summon can be estimated using the previous uh, approach. So we built such um, uh, distribution kappa. And uh, so we get some good estimation for this integral. Uh, we consider random variable epsilon n. It's a um, norm sum of uh, first n uh, element of the Bernoulli sequence. Uh, then zk uh, has a distribution mu k, and y and t is a normal sum of uh, y k t, uh, where y k t equal to zk if tau k greater than t, and equal to epsilon k if tau k uh, less or equal than t. Uh, then uh, this was the statistic between these two measures can be estimated as a uh, expectation of the difference between these two. Uh, random variables. Um, and this is less or equal than two uh, square root of n uh, exponent minus e. Uh, to estimate the second uh, summand, uh, we'll use the following theorem proved by Benkus, uh, which is generalization of uh, Bariessian inequality. So let uh, x1 xn be independent random vectors in Rd with zero mean, and consider a variable S, which is a sum of, epsilon, uh, of x1, xn, and Z be a Gaussian random vector with zero mean, and the same covariation as S, we will denote it by A squared. And beta is such a coefficient, a sum of expectation of absolute value uh, of A to the power minus one, xk, to the power three. Then uh, the following supremum uh, of absolute value of the difference between probability that add S belongs to B and Z belongs to B, less or equal than some constant, uh, multiplied by D to the power one over four, uh, multiplied by B, uh, where this B, um, the supremum is over all convex Z in RD. In our case, uh, we work in one dimensional space, and S is our norm sum of epsilon k. It's got the following distribution um, uh, the mean of uh, the uh, expectation of S equal to zero, with the expectation of S squared equal to one. So the Z is our uh, standard Gaussian random uh, variable, and beta in our case equal to one divided by square root of n. Then we've got that such a supremum uh, is less or equal than constant divided by uh, square root of n. Now we'll use this inequality uh, to calculate, to estimate the Wasserstein distance. Uh, if it's known by fs, cumulative function, a distribution function of s, then the Wasserstein distance can be calculated as follows. Um, uh, as the following supremum. Uh, it can be, uh, it, it was proved in book of Bogachev um, that this was a distance equal to supremum over... Um, which, which one? Which book? Sorry? What is the book of Bogachev? He has a lot uh, of... I, um, uh, just a second. Um, we converges of measures. Thank you. Um, so uh, the Wasserstein distance can be calculated as a following supremum over all, all uh, Lipschitz function psi. And using the integration by parts, uh, we've got uh, such an integral because of the Lipschitz condition, uh, the absolute value of the derivative is less or equal than one. So we've got this estimation. And we will divide this integral over th uh, into three parts from minus infinity to minus r, from minus r to plus r, and from r to plus infinity for some positive r. Uh, if we consider the last integral, uh, this integral is actually less or equal than um, uh, the expectation of s multiplied by indicator than s greater than r, uh, plus expectation um, the same expectation for z, and then using the Chebyshev inequality, we've got that 
this is less or equal than one divided by r. Uh, the same approach is true for the first integral. And to estimate the second integral, we can use uh, this previous inequality that we derived uh, here. So the supremum of such difference is less or equal than c divided by square root of n. And this integral is less or equal than this c divided by square root of n multiplied by the length of the interval by 2r. So uh, as a result, we get uh, such an estimation. And by choosing r, uh, this form, and to the power 1 over 4 divided by square root of c, uh, we've got uh, this inequality. And finally, uh, if we uh, combine these two estimations that we've got, we've got the Wasserstein distance between our measures uh, less or equal than such expression. And if um, this square root of n multiplied by exponent to the minus t goes to zero, then uh, such a position distance also goes to zero. So by, by choosing t uh, from n, uh, we can um, regulate the speed of convergence. And this is complete the proof of the theorem. And that's all I have for today. Um, maybe some questions or remarks. So if, if there are any questions, then uh, please. I maybe have a quick remark that if you return to the slide where it's talked about the book of Bogachev, this first equality is a well-known thing. So you can find it in a lot of books that's for younger participants. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's all. Okay, thank you. Uh, yes, it, it, it was not uh, Bogachev who proved it. Uh, uh, okay, uh, I have a small question about uh, your definition of uh, epsilon prime, uh, where you define it with uh, P PN. Yeah. Uh, so di did you consider the possibility that, uh, let's say, P2 depends on uh, epsilon 1, um, yeah, I thought about it because I want to like figure out how to give a more general definition for operator mm -hmm. second quantization. Uh, but now I didn't manage to, uh, you know, to do things right and to. Um, but yes, I think it's a good idea, and I will consider such uh, a case in the future. Yes, yeah, so maybe it 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 will give us some some more. Yeah. Uh, okay, maybe some more uh, questions. Uh, I have one question. Uh, yes. I'm working more with semigroups than with probability, but uh, uh, how do you uh, study? Do you study uh, exactly the semigroup, or how do you use the properties of semigroup in your work? Uh, because it's um... in the name, uh, how is it related? Actually, I studied more Markov process that related to this semigroup, not uh, the semigroup itself. Um, so, so its structure doesn't help you with this, yeah? Uh, not yet, but I think it will help in the future. Uh -huh. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, then if if uh, no more questions, then I think we we are done. And uh, next speaker will be Alexey Rudenko. So.